guys, I'm Dr. Corey Probst here with Dr. Joe Klimzeski. Welcome back to the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. Science or fiction today, and we're discussing GI distress and issues with fiber and fat and all things related to digestion. <laughs> a, a lot of things people don't realize are related to digestion and this kind of issue. Right. And you know, Joe, we have a lot of clients who come to us and they've got different symptoms like gas and bloating and um, I know you're going to share with us the first steps that w you know we should take in terms of looking at what we're eating and how much of those things we're eating. And I know that I'm going to learn a lot in this discussion as well. So, well, first of all, it is a it's a bigger deal than just a little discomfort because a lot of people don't realize that repetitive trauma to the lining of the GI system, specifically the large intestine. You know, we get, we get bloating, right, quote, unquote, and, we, you know, some of those things we think, well, it's because I'm eating protein powder or eggs or vegetables or it's just part of dieting. We don't realize that histologically that is creating cellular trauma that can lead to chronic issues, colitis, ulcerative colitis. A lot of people get misdiagnosed even with things like Crohn's or small bacterial overgrowth. There's all these exotic things physicians are looking for because a lot of them just aren't used to the fact that in the dieting culture, people are so abusive mm. to their GI system because of some of the weird food habits that we've adopted as normal. So what are some of those weird food habits that you see among your clients? So if people are taking notes, and I would encourage you to at least make a small list, uh, I want to talk about fiber first. There's, there's a quality and a, a quantity issue to fiber. Mm -hmm. There are your other food choices, so starch, fat, overall calories. Uh, there, there are supplements that we need to consider, even supplemental fiber sources, but I'm, I'm talking about vitamins, you know, creatine, branch chain aminos, things like that. And then, then I want to make sure that everybody does know what to look for if things are really going haywire. But I, I can tell you that that kind of uh, you know, irritable bowel syndrome symptom set, whether it's, it's just a lot of flatulence or you know, alternating between constipation and diarrhea or chronically going in one of those two directions, mm -hmm. that is not normal. That is not something that's just the cost of dieting or being lean. And you should look for ways to remedy that. You should, you should have a normal GI system experience every single day. So what's a normal GI system experience though? Is that maybe one to two firm bowel movements? Like yeah, and if you are seeing something other than that, in some people, especially when you're dieting because food mm -hmm. volume is low, it mm -hmm. may become normal to only use the restroom you know, once every couple of days, but if you're not going for several days, then there's a problem, and, and a lot of it's gonna have to do with all of the food that you're consuming or not consuming. So you should absolutely eliminate, you know, I would say once a day and it should not be difficult. And if you're, you know, you, you might have some mild symptoms or severe, but you should look to, to that normal, uh, you know, state of being. I think that's a really good point, Joe, because I do have some clients who they're used to going to the bathroom normally at least once a day. And then when they start dieting, because they're not eating as much food and they're going to have less bulk, they get a little bit, you know, nervous that they're not going every single day, despite no level of discomfort or anything. It's just that the frequency has changed. But, you know, under the current circumstances, with less food going in, less is going to be coming out. And that can be totally normal. And, and the opposite can also be true. If you have a high calorie intake, mm -hmm. you know, you might, you might have a normal experience, you know, going to the bathroom two or three times a day. But I would also encourage that person to maybe look at high food volume. I'll, I'll give you one quick example on that end. I've got a client who is eating 600 grams of carbs a day mm -hmm. and about 100 grams of fat a day, 150 mm -hmm. to 200 grams of protein a day. And so that's a lot of food, first of all, right? Yeah. So this person was, you know, intentionally trying to be healthy. So, you know, a lot of vegetables and trying to, it was really having a, a bad time with distension and because of all of that food volume being too high quality. So I said, look, we got to get rid of a lot of those vegetables. You just don't need that much. We need some of those 600 grams of carbs to come from simple sources that create a better, you know, starch-based 
bolus than just all of this high fiber. Rice, sweet potatoes. Absolutely. I imagine and it was hard for him to get 600 grams of carbs if he was eating, what, 50%, even 50% from veggie sources. Right. So instantly, he just started feeling way, way, way better, and it became more tolerable. So, so on both ends of that continuum, there are issues. But let's, let's talk about fiber quality oh. first, or, or let's, let's start with quantity. So, so the RDA being around 25 grams to 35 grams okay. of fiber a day, you know, that's, that's just one of those, uh, you know, bell curve estimations. So some people can get away with less and that's where they should be. Some people need more, but you know, if, if you want to quantitatively add up the amount of fiber, that's fine. I simply look at it this way. You know, if, if you're having, even if you're eating four, five, six, seven meals a day, you know, look at your three main meals. I, mm -hmm. I think most people still look at kind of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even if you're doing some time-restricted eating. You, you've got three solid meals a day. You should have some form of fiber in those meals. It doesn't all have to be vegetable fiber. Um, there's a difference between soluble and insoluble, but where people run into problems is they have too much insoluble fiber. So the whole reason we're having this discussion today <laughs> is I, 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 I get – easily two, three, maybe five people a day emailing me, you know, from other coaches or other coaches emailing about their clients with GI issues. And nine out of 10 times, it's because they're just consuming way too much fiber, way too much of these harsh fibers so from like way, way too many raw vegetables or what's in the fake food industry. So they're getting mm -hmm low carb breads, low carb wraps, you're getting these massively high fiber protein bars and products mm -hmm. and, and nothing will rip up your GI system quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> so if they were to start somewhere, it could just be them cooking their vegetables to break Absolutely. down those fiber sources. Yeah, the, the, the number one issue is, is always, you know, the gas distension, the pain that's caused by that. So so a, uh, a client from another coach, you know, they, they, we, we did a little team huddle and they said, you know, here's, here's a picture of me normally from the side. Here's a picture of me a couple nights ago. And she, right. you know, she said, I, I feel like I'm, you know, six months pregnant. Right. And, and I looked at her food intake. And the first thing I look for is how much overall fiber, especially from vegetables is there. And it, her, her meal plan looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. So then I looked at supplements. Well, what do you take? And, and I was actually looking for things like branch chain amino acids or just an inordinate amount of vitamins because a lot of times those cause GI distress. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you know, her only real supplement of concern was she was taking a cleanse type fiber supplement. So the very first ingredient is psyllium. So just a high, high amount of psyllium fiber which is effective, but it's unbelievably harsh. So it creates a ton of gas mm -hmm. and, and a lot of stool. So that's going to sometimes not cause a bowel movement like you want. Sometimes it makes you actually more constipated because it, yeah. it dries everything up. It acts like a sponge. Mm -hmm. You know, I have seen with some of my clients too, when they start to feel like they're not going to the bathroom frequently enough, that's when they'll jump on the wag something like metamucil which is i believe that's the psyllium fiber mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't necessarily help them it actually makes it worse absolutely and, and for some people you know maybe they just need to reduce that but i would also look at the food quality especially that you can get from soluble fiber so you know one of the things that i make sure i do because i have a sensitive gi system is i have to have enough fiber but not too much and besides that quantity i have to mm -hmm. keep an eye on quality mm -hmm. and, and i have to make sure i've got a good amount of soluble fiber so that's why i have oatmeal for breakfast or if i'm not doing oatmeal i have you know fruit in my protein shake for breakfast but there's always that there's always you know maybe a granola bar there's enough starch because even though people kind of poo poo no pun intended on on wheat you know, unless, yeah. unless you have legitimate celiac disease, you can, you can have wheat. But even though that is a starch that creates a better bolus, it still has some fiber in it. Mm -hmm. And then I make sure I have a serving or two of vegetables a day. But if I have too much of that, mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm going to go into a place of either, 
you know, constipation or diarrhea because too much fiber can do either one of those depending on, on you and the type and the volume. So the soluble fibers are coming from your starches and your grains primarily and the insolubles are coming and fruits and the insolubles are coming from your vegetable sources. Yeah, th you know, think of it as a continuum. Something that's mm -hmm. insoluble is just a vegetable that has very high amounts of oligo, you know, polysaccharides that your body just can't break down. So if you've ever gone to the restroom and you see some of your food in the stool as corn. if you had just eaten it, corn is one of those <laughs> things, that, uh, you know, shell of a corn yeah. kernel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and things like that. Or salad. A lot of times people will have diarrhea and it just looks like little cellulose <laughs> um, cells in there. And it's, it's, it's the actual, mm -hmm. you know, parts of the, the lettuce leaves. Yeah. So that can be just way, way too much. Okay. So you mentioned two supplements. What would you recommend? Say someone is taking a bunch of supplements. Let's use me for an example. I take branch chains. I take creatine. I take glutamine. I take citrusel. These are things that I have every morning. Um, and then I have some caffeine also. So I, I don't have any issues, but say that I started to have some flatulence and I'm, I'm bloating and it's kind of painful and maybe it starts to turn into some diarrhea. Like what would you have me do? It, and all those are very common symptom sets. Um, and, and so, you know, I always look overall, at, like I said, at the overall food plan. I want to see the food. I want to see if there's too much fiber, too much uh, rough fiber. I want to look at those fake processed foods. I'm going to look at, you know, is there enough starch? Maybe we even need to add a little bit of fat to make mm -hmm. more of an emollient texture to the stool. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this really is physics first. You know, we're, we're looking at the actual properties of the foods, but I will end up drilling all the way down into supplements because a lot of people don't realize those are chemical irritants in some instances. And I've seen people that just have a hard time with a specific brand of a vitamin and it causes right. repetitive diarrhea. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that are very notable that, that I see are number one, just way too many. We, we may never even be able to isolate. If somebody sent me a list of 40 vitamins and supplements they're taking, <laughs> I may need to say, look, we cannot figure this out one at a time. So we've got to spend a week mm -hmm. away from everything to get your GI system calmed down then let's start adding one thing at a time. And, and it's very yeah. easy sometimes to find that out. But in our industry, uh, it, it is oftentimes these, these combined powders. So amino acids are, are notorious. A lot of people take a, a handful of amino acid capsules or an entire scoop. I, I can't tell you how many clients I've had that had almost colitis level GI distress and it was just because they were taking branch chain aminos around the clock. Always got that gallon jug with branch chains, five grams, five grams, five grams. And uh, wow. I've, I've, I've seen something that simple cause these kind of issues. Yeah. Okay. So what about probiotics? <laughs> because a lot of people are believing that they need to do something like that every single day. Will that... Well, yeah, just, just, just like that person who emailed and was thinking she was doing something well by taking a fiber supplement, mm -hmm. probiotics, I mean, they're advertised for that. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if your tummy hurts, if you're having gas, bloating, take probiotics. These things cause more of that than they help cure. And, and the reason is total volume. Again, you, you don't need these things every day. You don't need them every meal. You probably don't need them at all unless you're just coming off of antibiotics or something like that. Right. But if you're going to take a probiotic, I would take a small dose, maybe a half of what they recommend. Take that and then wait for a couple days. See what you notice. If that helped, because a lot of times it will. A lot of times it will reduce flatulence. You're repopulating the right bacterial flora. Mm -hmm. But too much of it can do just the opposite. Yeah, I think that can get really complicated and confusing for a lot of people with all the information that's coming out about healthy gut microbiota and the microbiome and what do I eat and what should I not eat. But repeatedly we see that fiber is super important because that's what the, um, that's what the bacteria feed on. But again, I think we come back to everyone is going to be different and the yeah. amount of fiber that they're going to be able to consume and still, you know, maintain a healthy balance is going to be different. 
You just made a great point. I mean, and that's why too much fiber or the wrong kind of fiber that is insoluble is a real hazard because the, the anaerobic bacteria then feed on that and the uh, byproduct is methane gas, literally methane gas. And that's where you get the, the discomfort. But like I said, that discomfort isn't just a, a problem for you in terms of how you feel. It can change the, the cell health in the lining of your GI system and cause real long-term issues. So there are, there are reasons to worry about your GI system. Number one, even things like thyroid can affect the motility. You know, you can have nervous system issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, hormones impact that a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but these are all of the things that we do to ourselves unknowingly that can cause a lot of trauma. Hmm. What about fat? You mentioned briefly that fat sometimes needs to be um, monitored closely and or shifted. And if we just look at, let's look at my nutrition, for example, my fat sources aren't coming from oils in particular. I eat avocados mm -hmm. um, and avocados have a significant amount of fiber in them too. <laughs> but in a say I I'm in that situation again, and we've kind of, we've looked at everything beyond fat sources. Um, you know, is that how, what would you do in a situation like that? So unsaturated fat mm -hmm. is smaller molecularly, just like we're talking about soluble fiber from fruits and grains is smaller. So your, your body has an easier time digesting and using that to its advantage. If you eat a ton of saturated fat, that's likely to cause diarrhea because it just mm -hmm. kind of flushes you out almost like the Olestra phenomena. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's soluble, like in your avocado or some healthy oils, even nuts, things like that, it's mm -hmm. going to actually create a better stool because it's going to keep, uh, keep that bolus moving easier than if it's just a lot of, um, you know, just fibrous carbs or just starch, yeah. that kind of thing. But, you know, just to tag on to that question about fat would be mm -hmm. hydration. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes all a person has to do is start drinking an extra two or three glasses of water a day. Yes. You know? that can solve a lot of problems. Okay, and then movement too, that's super important as well, right? For healthy mm -hmm. digestive system. Yeah, I, I can't imagine a lot of people watching our content are not gonna be training or moving. <laughs> uh, but, right. but yeah, if you have a sedentary lifestyle, absolutely, just daily movement is big. But you know, if, if I had to kind of list this out in priorities mm -hmm. and say, look, you got, you got some issues here. You've got gas, bloating, discomfort, maybe constipation, maybe diarrhea, maybe both. All of those things are not normal. They're not healthy. And so you got to start looking at why. And so just like I would investigatively start searching somebody's food intake, mm -hmm. I'm looking for overall fiber content. I'm looking at, is there too much that's too harsh? Are there fake fibers from, you know, these, these, God awful protein bars that add them and things like that. Let's look uh, at the processed foods we're eating for sure. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, maybe you need to trade some of your your harsh fiber for something like fruit, or at least cook some vegetables, like you said, Corey, so they're not as as undigestible. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you need to look at at fat content and hydration, but then eventually getting down even to something like vitamins and supplements. These things all matter. And, and again, my biggest point is GI health is not just about being comfortable. This can lead to chronic, tragic uh, issues. One more point, Joe, just to kind of wrap this up. I will say that like on a daily basis, no weird symptoms with bowel movements or gas or bloating or anything, but there's a certain time around my cycle where mm -hmm. that occurs. Absolutely. And so, and I'm not the only one. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of women who experience the same thing. And so in situations like that, I mean, sure, we could go through our, our nutrition and see if around that time, maybe we need to modify some things, but not to freak out at the same time, but to recognize that, you know, your hormones are shifting and that, that will change some things too. Yeah, and, and that's definitely a place to experiment to say with with your 
you know, luteal hormone fluctuation, you know, crisscrossing there, you may absolutely need to say, okay, usually around, you know, two or three days before I start my period, maybe I do need to start eating a little bit more fiber, maybe reduce this uh, and just, just experiment. Because again, there, yeah. there's not going to be any, you know, exact specific formula for everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. This was good. Well, thanks for letting me have this conversation. I know I've written so many articles about this. Mm -hmm. I've done other platform type type lectures on this, but I realized I don't think we've ever talked this much in depth. Mm -hmm. And gosh, I just, I, I need to get some content out here because I get this question uh, way too often. Yeah. So share this guys. We'll put the dough. We could put some of those articles in the show notes as well. So Good people idea. can access them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching and listening. And like Corey said, definitely this is one to keep on hand, keep this link and share it uh, because a lot of people have questions in this area. So Thank you guys and we will catch you next time. Thanks guys.